previously. In our last episode, we were exploring Northcliff and surrounds. We ventured through the forest, found some mega sand dunes and stunning coastline. Now we're heading to uh, Boat Harbour Camp, which our Patreon trainers picked. So yeah, stay tuned. So Kurt, why does Trent get to pick our next campsite? Because he's one of our patrons and he's one of the higher tier patrons. Uh, it was camper that he was on, so that means that he gets to pick our next camping destination and some uh, attractions along the way. Uh, so yeah, he's been a patron for a couple of months now, so... Thank you, Trent. Thanks, Trent. And yeah. This next campsite and attractions are chosen by you, so hopefully they're good. I'm sure they will be. <laughs> <laughs> so we had left SIDS at Northcliff and were en route to Boat Harbour Camp, which is situated about halfway between Walpole and Denmark. Boat Harbour Camp is a couple of kilometres off the bitumen on a dirt track. It was a pretty tame dirt road, no need to deflate. Once all checked in, the caretaker gave me a map and said we could choose a site to our liking. The campground was quite large as we drove through. We chose a nice shady spot, set up and then wandered around checking out the facilities. A decent camp kitchen with a variety of cooking methods available. There was about half a dozen chalets if you wanted a touch of luxury and a small amenities block with flushing toilets and great hot showers with decent water pressure. Our camp spot was about 150 metres away from the toilet block, so plenty of space between us and our neighbours. We then took Rusty for a nice walk towards the lake. The next day we were up bright and early and off to our first spot for the day, Mount Franklin. It's an approximately 50 minute drive from Boat Harbour Camp. Kurt's GPS took us down some back roads, which was interesting. There she is, we're getting close. Hey guys, so we're just up about to start the walk to Mount Franklin. It's a 600 meter walk to the summit, so it's nice and easy. Well, it's steep, but it should be quick and easy. Yeah, nice short walk. Trent, our Patreon, this was one of his activities he's chosen. So yeah, I can't wait to climb it and it's meant to have epic views up top. Let's go and have a look. The first half of the walk is a paved incline which brings you to some steps and ladders for the second half of the walk.
Made it. Made it. It's about 10 minutes, quite steep. Wasn't too bad. Got the heart rate up. Yeah, yeah nice bit, views. It's a bit glary. Nice views behind us. We're actually uh, not alone. There's actually a guy in that hut. <laughs> His job is to spot fires. So, yeah. So thank you, Trent. It was a good hike. Yeah. Well worth the short, steep climb up. What are you doing? I keep following you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. We're going to head back down now. <laughs> Just down the first flight of stairs, we decided to give our little DJI Spark a quick fly and stretch his rotors. Although we didn't have clear blue skies, you can still appreciate how epic the 360 degree views were. And when our eyes, they On the way back down, we spotted this platform walk off to the side. Driving out of the forest and towards our next stop, we passed this monster tree laying down. The trunk was the width of the nav. The next pit stop was a saw brick art walk. You're greeted from the car park by this large mirrored wall, which leads to the art walk. The art walk is a collection of art pieces from a variety of artists and their take on the deforestation history of the area. It's not overly amazing, but a nice easy stroll to stretch your legs and learn some history of the area. Next up was the giant tingle tree. A short 400 meter stroll down to a sealed pathway passing large trees to reach the mega giant. And it was huge. I think it's fair to say this is the largest tree base we have ever seen. Now we passed this river the previous day and as strange as it sounds, as soon as I saw it, I wanted to have a fish in it. Well, we returned today and I wet a line. 15 minutes later, I see Kurt at my window with this. <laughs> got a crab. I got a foul hooked him when I was fishing. He's massive. He's the biggest blue crab I've ever caught. So he'll make a nice entree for dinner tonight. Yummy. After a couple of minutes of deciding what to do with it, we threw him in the freezer for later. Our last tourist spot for the morning was the Valley of the Giants. You even got a gift shop. We decided to do the ancient tree walk, which is a free walk around the base of the trees. It was a nice easy stroll through some more monster trees. Hey guys, so just finished at the treetop walk, uh, the Valley of the Giants. We didn't actually do the treetop walk. We decided just to do the free walk, the ancient walk on the ground. 
after me climbing all those trees, I was pretty happy with the view because. Yeah, I'm getting treed out at the moment. Yeah, he's not too fast. <laughs> so we decided on this occasion to just save our dollars and uh, yeah, save for another adventure. But we still visited. It was still pretty good. They uh, walk along the ground. So if you want to be stingy like us, come in and do that one. <laughs> all right, I'm going to head back. So we headed back to camp and made some lunch. The weather still wasn't the best, but we decided to go for a drive to check out Boat Harbour Beach. It's a 15 minute drive from the camp on a sandy corrugated track. We managed to make it to the end without deflating our tyres. Definitely need a four-wheel drive though for the soft sandy parts. We walked around and checked out the calm bay and also the surf side. Looks like it would be nice if the sun was out. Ah oh well, we turned the nav around and headed back to camp to start a fire. All right guys, I got spag bowl, got some water boiling for Kurt's crab. And we got some water ready to go for our pasta. And Kurt's got the fire going. And a poking stick. You just find a poking stick over there. Oh, doesn't that look good? Sun's going down just there. It's gonna be a good night. Everyone's spread out, which is good. Thanks Trent, top campsite. Got crab for dinner, fire, beer. Excellent. He was one happy chappy with his crab. As we relax, we saw the sky turn pink, very pretty. It was hard to drag the girls away from the campfire. They were warm and all snuggled up. Hey guys, so we've been a bit quiet this morning. The weather hasn't been the best, but the blue skies are out. So we're gonna head back to Boat Harbour Beach and have a fish, see if we can catch some fish for dinner. Yeah, let's go. Back here at Boat Harbour, sun's out. Look how beautiful the beach looks. Amazing what the sunshine can do. We were here yesterday, it looked nothing like this. Okay, it's just gonna get the car. We're gonna park it here. And then we're gonna go for a fish out there. Hopefully catch some uh, fish for dinner. All rigged up, we threw our lines out, hoping to catch something decent for dinner. I caught this small herring, we chopped up for some more bait. We then moved around to the beach. No fish, no fish on this occasion. I go. But beautiful scenery. Windy. A little bit windy. 
While we had the drone up, we saw this small secluded bay and wanted to take a closer look. It looked just as pretty in person, so I threw on my swimmers and hopped in for a dip. And we have left Boat Harbour after spending three nights. Yeah, it was good camp. Um, love that you could have fires. Will admit it looked a bit rustic on arrival, but loved it. Yeah, still enjoyed our stay. Yeah, bush camp, like sort of semi bush camping, powered sites if you want it, uh, hot showers, good camp kitchen, flushing toilets. And you got Boat Harbour down the road. Yeah, 15 minute drive to Boat Harbour, which is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, yeah we loved our stay there. Yeah. Now we're uh, heading into Denmark and off to Cozy Corner, free camp. Let's go. Let's go. We're just here at Greenpools in William Bay National Park. This is Trent's second activity he chose us to come do. It was a real easy one because we we're going to come here anyway, so let's go check it out. Let's go have a look. We knew this was going to be a wow place, so we waited until we had a clear sunny day to visit, and boy was it worth it. Green pools looked amazing. There was quite a few people around, but who could blame them when it was this stunning? We then walked five minutes along the track to see Elephant Cove next door. So we're just here at Elephant's Cove and it's called Elephant's Cove because these big rocks paint to look like elephants. It's a beautiful day to come. Water is crystal clear, not a cloud in sight. This is for you, Trent. <laughs> Of course, we had to pop the drone up to see this magical place from the air. And yep, it looked just as stunning from the air. The water was rather nippy, but it looked too good not to throw on our swimmers and jump in. We both agreed and we're glad we did. Well, safe to say we love green pools and elephant rocks. Join us in the next episode where we will find a cozy spot to camp and explore Albany and the surrounds. Love our videos? Why not help support us on Patreon? Even just a couple of dollars would be much appreciated. Give this video a like and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're new. Cheers legends!